Personally, I'm always optimistic when it comes to remakes of old series. As much as I love Legend of the Galactic Heroes, I'm looking forward to the reboot this spring. I've never seen the original Hunter x Hunter, but the modern adaptation is one of my favorite anime. Thusly, as you may recall, this September I made a video on the original 2003 Kino's Journey, in which I expressed hopes that the 2017 remake could actually surpass it. I felt that the original's main weaknesses were in its aesthetics, so I latched onto the idea that as long as the writing remained strong and the production values improved, as I already knew they had from the PV, we could end up with a truly great series. However, skip ahead to present day, and as much as it pains me to admit, I was wrong, at least in part. The new Kino's Journey is still a good series, but now more than halfway through, it's become clear that it will likely never be a great one. And listen, we can debate all day about which one looks better, simply because the two look so very different, so that will not be the focus of this video. Rather, I think it's important to overlook the obvious visual differences in order to examine the structure of these two series, and how each one treats its stories. Kino's Journey, for those unaware, follows a wanderer named Kino along with her talking motorcycle, Hermes. The two come across many small nations in their travels, each with its own unique culture, lifestyle, and technologies. And Kino and Hermes spend only a short time in each before moving on. The series is thus very episodic, with each episode concentrating on one or more individual countries, while the next focuses on entirely new ones. Usually, these countries and the events that unfold within will serve to articulate some sort of philosophical or societal message, like the intrinsic need for distance between individuals, or the relative morality of the law. And it's these themes that elevate the series above a plodding slice of life about a girl and her motorcycle. But at this point, there's over 20 volumes of the Kino's Journey novels, which is far too many to adapt into 12 episodes given to the new series, so they decided to leave it up to fans. According to this article on Crunchyroll, linked in the description, it was announced at Dengeki Bunko Festival 2017 that the new Kino's Journey anime would adapt stories which won a popularity poll among readers in 2015. In effect, fans' favorite stories were the ones chosen to be animated, which sounds great on paper, but in actuality might be one of the worst things that could have happened. As the new series has progressed, there have been certain recurring elements cropping up in nearly every episode, namely death and or violence. The original series certainly had both of these things, but it was hardly an action show or a drama in the traditional sense. Kino herself was almost always a passive observer, bearing witness to the events and peoples of each nation, but only directly interfering in the most extreme of circumstances. In several episodes, she did little more than converse with the native inhabitants, gathering their stories and merely looking on as they lived their lives. But this time, over the span of, at the moment, seven episodes, Kino has already toppled the status quo of two countries and actively defended a third. In two more, while Kino herself remained neutral, the presence of death permeated the episode's proceedings. There's really been only one episode which displayed no degree of direct conflict, being episode 5. So why is that a bad thing? Being different from the original isn't inherently bad. In fact, a heavier action focus would probably hold a stronger mainstream appeal and get more people to watch it. But this is at the expense of atmosphere and coherency. If you leave a vote like this up to fans, they're going to select the immediately memorable stories, mostly the bombastic and explosive ones, the climaxes as it were. And the thing about climaxes is that they work well in moderation. They have to be built up to to feel impactful. Take for example the Coliseum narrative, as of yet the only story to be adapted by both series, taking place over episodes 6 and 7 of 2003 and episode 2 of 2017. This tale is noteworthy for involving a lot of fighting, hence the name Coliseum, culminating in an ending where Kino leaves the country in shambles. Putting aside the comparatively tortured pacing and lack of detail in the remake, the story's different placement in its respective series lends a totally different weight to its events. In the five episodes prior to Coliseum in the original, Kino had killed people, but only when her own person was in immediate danger. She had, to that point, taken no actions to change or fix the broader world around her, and this then made her intervention in Colosseum all the more stunning. It showed that there was a level of cruelty and injustice that even Kino would not just stand by and condone. However, by placing these events in the second episode, the remake creates a dramatically different first impression of Kino, not as a ginkgo-like nomad who only interferes when things are at their most dire, but as a badass vigilante with no qualms about overthrowing governments on a whim, which is 
reiterated when more or less the same thing happens in episode 4. By constructing a plot of mostly climaxes, mostly the big battles, without any of the usual downtime, this new series presents the viewer with an extremely lopsided characterization of Kino. This attitude of storytelling also manifests in other more subtle respects, such as the fact that the three-day rule, the general rule that Kino spends only three days in any nation, is practically non-existent, because again, the climaxes are climaxes since they break convention. They're the ones where she unexpectedly does stay more than three days. By not actually showing her three-day routine more than once, the series neglects to even establish the convention that it later breaks. And I suppose this was made even more difficult when there's three episodes where Kino isn't even the main character. Which is fine on principle, but again, stunted by trying to break a convention that, were it not for the title of the series, only kind of existed. Now you could argue that the initial root of this whole train of thought was speculative, and you would be correct. I have no way of knowing that fans truly did prioritize the action-packed stories for that reason. This could all be coincidence. However, it doesn't really matter. The new Kino's journey is what it is, leading to the failings I articulated, regardless of the exact reasons why it was produced that way. And what this all amounts to is that the remake fails to establish much of a consistent tone or philosophy. It feels cobbled together, each episode too caught up in its own spectacle to let the smaller moments breathe and feel purposeful, when they even exist at all. I guess you could approach it as a love letter to fans, adapting apparently the most well-known stories of the franchise, but taken in its own right, it just comes off as somewhat erratic and ill-thought-out. Please note, this is not to say that the new Kino's journey is irredeemable, or unwatchable. Hardly. I'm still having a good time with it, the stories it adapts are still written by the same author with the same themes on people and society that he so loves. And we do have five episodes left to go, but its continued insistence on adapting only the most action and death-filled stories blunts the unique edge that its predecessor bore. And that'll do it. Thanks for watching, have a great day, leave any feedback in the comments, and subscribe if you want more. And to be clear, this is not the review I mentioned I was working on last time. That's still in the hopper. I just detoured yet again to make this. Till then, see you next time.